不久前，一份名为《中国教育发展报告（二零一四）教育蓝皮书》的发布，引起了社会的广泛关注。在研究和探讨了中国教育现状的同时，这份报告特别搜集了七十九起由媒体报道的中小学生自杀案例。该报告得出的结论是：巨大的学习压力是中国学生的自杀主因。为官无罪，吐槽有理。这里是集天下英雄神吐槽神回复的网络评论节目《身在曹营》，我是营长李想。说到中国的基础教育，人们通常啊有两个印象：分数很高，压力很大。不知道从什么时候开始啊，中国就流行这么一种说法：说一个中国的初中生和美国的高中生啊，他们俩 PK 成绩。那美国的学生啊，他是连进复活赛的机会都没有。中国人聪明、勤奋，这些呀、啊、都是不用再说的了。可是，就像今年的这份《中国教育发展报告》里边提到的，中国学生的学习压力也越来越大。说到这儿啊，很多人就想问了：那美国有这么多的世界名牌大学，那美国的学生跟中国的学生比起来，他们的压力大不大呢？就这个问题。我们专门走访了连续两年被评为全球排名第一的加州理工学院，让那儿的学霸们回忆一下他们的高中学习生活。一起来进入今天的“亲，你怎么看？” My classes would start at 7:30 a.m. and I'd have classes until about 3:10. The typical high school, I had, let's see, class starting from 9 o'clock-ish in the morning, and I finished by 4:15. After school, how many hours would you say you spend on doing your homework and school stuff every day? Depending on the day,、uh, one to five hours. I think it really depends on like the level, the year. Uh, that you're at, but probably junior year was my toughest, and I would so maybe six or seven hours worth of homework. No, six, seven hours or so, maybe. Every day.、Mm-hmm. Have a weekend where you have like any like, activities, like, have fun on weekend for you. Oh,、uh, high school fun on weekends. Um, yeah, I would pretty much just mow the lawn, and for me, mowing the lawn was a nice eight-hour chore and. Yeah, that and sleep. Really, I use the weekends during、uh, high school to sleep. No, I just pretty much for me was just watch TV or do something fun on the weekend. Yeah, there wasn't much pressure on me in high school because like I was already succeeding so much in high school that like I couldn't concede, couldn't succeed anymore. But、uh, that all changed to Caltech. Class kind of had its own pressure. Um, at any point in time, I think I was focused on maybe one or two classes. I wasn't focused on all seven of them, so like five of them would be just like on the back burner. It would be like pretty easy, and then one or two of them I'd focus on. I'd study a little bit and try to like, you know, get that A. Yeah, I'm in a pretty competitive community, so、um, and we start ranking only in high school,、um, but the moment it starts, I guess it's very very obvious. It was it was pretty typical, I guess. I had a lot of busy work,、um, lots of homework that was you could do it in the next class, <laughs> during class or whatever.、Um, lots of projects too.、Uh, we made little films and things like that. It's because our students do have、um, a lot of choice, especially by time they get to、um, high school, about the level of academic coursework they're going to take. No one is forced into taking an IB course. Or an advanced placement course, unless their parents or their guardians have forced them into doing that, and that's when it becomes problematic. Is if it isn't intrinsic that motivation to be successful. 记得我上高中的时候啊，基本上是这么一个作息时间啊：早上六点起床，七点到校自习，中午十二点半下课，吃完饭在桌子上趴半个小时，起来接着听课。如果没有补习的话，那就是晚上六点半放学，七点左右到家。吃完饭，你得赶紧开始看书写作业。基本上这夜里要是两点能睡下，那都算早了。相比起来啊，刚才那些学霸们在学校里边上课的时间确实比我们短了不少，但这课后的压力呢，也没轻松到哪儿去。就像刚才那位教委说的一样，美国高中的课程是分难度级别的，你要是不想把自己逼得太紧喽，大可以选择难度很低的课程。
，只不过在各大高校录取你的时候，你这个选科记录呀，也会成为被考察的项目之一。啊，老师可不管，你呀，好自为之。而且这个美国大学它的录取标准呢，不单是看你的学习成绩，看得看你有没有积极参与这个社会实践活动，有没有社团的领导才能，还有你在高中里边每一次迟到、每一次违反纪律都会被记录在案，直接对升学产生影响。咱们这么说吧，美国大学在录取新生的时候啊，更多的是考虑这个学生的综合素质和一个长期的表现。你要知道啊。美国的高中里边，每一次考试的分数都会算进你的 GPA 成绩，这也是大学招生的重要参考依据。反过来看中国的学生，十几年寒窗苦读，最后拼的就是高考这三天的表现，啊，他真是成王败寇啊！你要说你这三天身体不太舒服，没发挥好，那你就苦逼了。哎呀，啊，反过来要是人品爆发，是状态极佳，那你就是熬出头了。您再回头看看这边哈、啊，又不能耽误学习，还得积极参与课外活动，锻炼其他技能。这美国学生也真心是不容易啊。And、our um Chinese parents or Asian parents is they like to compare against their other parents' uh childrens. So if the children can get into this high performance school, um because of the the getting the higher scores in this entrance exam. Then they stand out. That these students are smart and、uh, outstanding, and then the parents constantly use this one to brag about it, the his or her her own own childrens. We need to help educate our parents as to yes, high schools high scores are important, but colleges want well-rounded students who express an interest, who show a passion for something, and so that a lower grade might be offset. By what they're doing in their free time, you know, and、uh, what they're pursuing, and how they're going to contribute not only to the college life but to, you know, society once they complete、um, complete school. The the good part of the American education system, the, the first one is、uh, they they are, the students are very creative, they are creative, and the the second part is just.、Uh, Uh, like like mentioned about it, is、uh, the students that starting young, they participate you know all the activities, and the part participate in the in the in the different kind of team teamwork. So they are very strong in teamwork. So if they study and the doing the project, their project the, the result of the, their project, many times is outperform or the beyond the expectation of teachers. 我们的中国教育呢，简单说呢，就是在中国的大的发展背景中，呃，强调专业性和呃功利性啊、呃、重了一些。它过于强调，呃，在未来的过程中，学生为某一个目的而奋斗。呃，其实，在美国的大学中或者美国的教育中呢，它是注重人的全面素质的培养，它未来的发展取决于它过去的积累和打的基础，呃。毕业以后，从事多种工作的选择机会比较多，而我们的中国的教育呢，总体来说路走的还不够宽。我觉得中美之间在教育这个方面的教育交流，还要呃进一步的加强相互学习和沟通。在基础教育这个方面，中国是有着绝对的优势。但是就在前几年，一个权威的国际调查报告得出了一个惊人的结论。说中国学生的创造力啊，在全世界排名倒数第五，而想象力呢，居然是倒数第一，这就让人想不通了啊！凭什么美国学生的分数普遍都没有中国的高，可是偏偏就有着全世界公认的最优秀的高等教育呢？就为这个，中国的很多学校近几年来是没少尝试创新教育，社会上关于这个教育改革的呼声也很高。可是说到底，如果中国的高考制度没有改变，这种一战定胜负的瓶颈不能真正的突破，那这些中国孩子们还有什么心思去拓展这些创新力啊、想象力啊，去关注这些事儿呢？而对于那些望子成龙的家长们来说，就像那位教委说的一样，当一切都向分数看齐的时候，还有什么比卷子上的成绩更重要呢？
。好，感谢您收看本期的《身在曹营》。本节目面向天下英雄开放讨论，如果你有好槽点、好槽文、好槽声，均可以 email 给我们，地址如下。同时，请大家关注乔宝网视频官方微博，把您的宝贵意见告诉我们。为官无罪，吐槽有理。我们下期再会。